What's up and welcome back to another video. I'm Dr. Daniel Ricciardi, gut health expert, licensed pharmacist, fitness enthusiast, and creator of SIBO Shortcut, the all-in-one online program designed to help you eliminate small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, aka SIBO, and help you live a bloat-free life. This video is going to be on three ways to fix small intestinal gut motility. When I say small intestinal gut motility, I want to be very clear on what this means. I'm not talking about laxatives or stool softeners that actually on the large intestine to help you have bowel movements. I'm referring just to the small intestine and supporting what is known as the migrating motor complex or MMC. The MMC is a system of nerves and muscles in your small intestine that helps you have proper gut motility. It squeezes each section from the top down to the bottom to successfully move food throughout your small intestine and down into your large intestine. If your MMC is impaired, conditions such as SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, and IMO, intestinal methanogen overgrowth, formerly called methane SIBO, are more likely to happen. All right, and let's get started with three ways to fix small intestinal gut motility and prevent SIBO and intestinal methanogen overgrowth. Way number one is intermittent fasting and no snacking. As I just mentioned previously, the MMC migrating motor complex helps with gut motility. However, this MMC has a very important rule that it operates by. The rule is it only works when you are fasting. This means that once you swallow a bite of food and start a new meal or a new snack, the MMC completely stops its sweep of your small intestine. Therefore, not eating food for specific periods of time throughout the day is key. And according to research, it seems like the MMC cycle can vary greatly from person to person. This 1998 study by the American Journal of Physiology looked at the amount of time it takes the migrating motor complex to complete its sweep of the small intestine. While there are a few variables that can affect how long the MMC cycle is from person to person, it was found that the mean MMC cycle duration was 117.3 minutes plus or minus 13.9 minutes, regardless of the place of origin of phase three. Keep in mind the term mean refers to the average and the average amount of time for an MMC cycle in this study was 117 minutes, which is roughly two hours. As I mentioned previously though, depending on the person, this time of MMC cycle can vary greatly and actually be much longer as evidenced by this chart of the 19 patients in the study and their MMC cycle times. As you can see, there's patients that had MMC cycle times of over three hours and even one patient over four hours. So if you do have slow gut motility or have had a history of SIBO or intestinal methanogen overgrowth, you understand that you may not be the average person in this chart, the 117 minute per cycle person. In this case, fasting can really help you here because going extended periods of time without eating can really help you with gut motility because it gives your MMC time to fully complete its sweep of your small intestine. And intermittent fasting is one way to do this. Intermittent fasting is a diet strategy in which you have an eating window and a fasting window. During the eating window, you eat all of the food that you would eat for that entire day. For intermittent fasting, a typical fasting window ranges between 12 and 18 hours, depending on what your eating window is. While there are certain longer versions of intermittent fasting that may be effective in certain situations. Typically, when you add the eating and fasting windows together, they should add up to 24 hours for 24 hours in a day. A couple typical intermittent fasting eating fasting regimens include a 6-18 regimen where you have an eating window of six hours per day, say you eat between noon and 6 p.m., and then the other 18 hours you fast all the way till the next day. Another example is an 8-16 where you eat for eight hours a day. Again, for example, noon to 8 p.m. you eat, and then the other 16 hours hours until the next day you would fast. In terms of beverages, consuming any carbs, proteins, or anything that causes insulin to be released technically can break your fast. This actually includes artificial sweeteners as well, which is evidenced by this 2020 study by the Journal of Family Medicine and Primary Care, which indicates that ingestion of these artificial sweeteners results in the release of insulin from the pancreas, which is mistaken for glucose due to their sweet taste. This increases the levels of insulin in blood, eventually leading to decreased receptor activity due to insulin resistance. When you have an insulin response, this means that your body believes that it is eating food, even if there's zero calories, even in the case of artificial sweeteners when there's actually zero calories. And when this happens, the MMC is suspected to stop working. Therefore, your gut motility is negatively affected. To make it extremely straightforward, avoiding anything with calories as well as artificial sweeteners is the simplest way to know that you're not going to be breaking your fast. It is suggested that pure fat, such as grass-fed 
powder or medium chain triglyceride or MCT oil will not break your fast. While there may be some truth to this, if the purpose of your intermittent fasting is for gut motility, I would probably err on the side of caution and refrain from consuming these. If you're doing intermittent fasting, I'd probably limit your intake during your fasting period to just black coffee with nothing else added, unsweetened tea with nothing else added, and water. The whole idea is to get used to and get comfortable with going without food for an extended period of time. And there's a ton of additional benefits to intermittent fasting as well. To maintain the scope of this video, I'm not going to go into more of them today. And as a quick disclaimer, intermittent fasting may not be safe for everyone. Always talk to your doctor before starting an intermittent fasting diet. It's also good to avoid snacking in between meals. And this ties into the same concept as intermittent fasting. If you're constantly having small bites of food throughout the day, it makes it much more difficult for your MMC to do its job effectively. And this can worsen gut motility. And method number two for fixing gut motility is prokinetics. The term kinetic means relating to or resulting from motion. Therefore, prokinetic means favoring motion. Prokinetics are available both as prescription medications and over-the-counter supplements. A lot of them come in capsule form while others come in liquid or tincture form. They work by activating various receptors in your body. Some prokinetics work just in your stomach while others have a greater impact on the small intestine, thus assisting the MMC with gut motility. As I mentioned before, keep in mind that these are not laxatives and you can actually use them even if you're not constipated. Each prokinetic is a little bit different and activates different receptors. To give you an idea, this 2021 publication titled Drugs Affecting Gastrointestinal Motility indicates that the principal local hormones that modulate gut motility are ghrelin, cholecystokinin, motilin, glucagon-like peptide 1, serotonin, and dopamine. As I mentioned, there's different receptors and hormones involved in gut motility. Therefore, some prokinetics will work great for some people, but not for others. Some examples of prescription prokinetics include procalipride, brand name is Motegrity. For SIBO, this one's likely to be the best option. There's also low-dose naltrexone and low-dose erythromycin. And for over-the-counter products, there's a wide variety of them. Some include iberogast, ginger root, artichoke, and many other formulas containing these ingredients and other herbals in various combinations. And final word, for your safety, always consult a doctor before starting a prokinetic. And the final method to help fix gut motility, method number three, is ileothecal valve massage. The ileothecal valve is a barrier that separates the small intestine from the large intestine. When functioning properly, it only allows substances to pass from the small intestine over into the large intestine. However, if the ileothecal valve is stuck, meaning it is not working properly, contents of the large intestine can actually travel back into the small intestine, which is not what we want to happen. Over 99% of your gut bacteria, aka your microbiome, is found in your large intestine. Therefore, these bacteria, which there are hundreds of trillions of them, are able to travel back into the small intestine. This makes it more likely to develop small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, aka SIBO. This 2012 study from the World Journal of Gastroenterology explored if a malfunctioning ileothecal valve was correlated with SIBO. They used two groups of people in this study. One group had SIBO and one group did not have SIBO. And they injected air near the ileothecal valve. This study found that the average peak ileothecal valve pressure during air insufflation into the cecum in subjects with normal lactulose breath tests was significantly higher than cecal pressure during air insufflation with SIBO. When looking at this study, you want the air pressure to actually be higher because this means the ileothecal valve is closed and a solid barrier is there. So in the study, patients that did not have SIBO were actually found to have higher gas pressure. And on the other hand, patients that had SIBO were found to have lower gas pressure because that ileothecal valve was open. Fortunately, there is a technique you can do to help fix the ileothecal valve. It's usually easiest to lay down to do this. First, you need to find the spot where the ileothecal valve is. It's located about halfway between your belly button and the top of your right hip bone. Once you found the spot, press down and massage in a clockwise motion for about 30 seconds. I find this easier to do with the index and middle finger on each hand so you can do so with a little bit more force. You can also press in and then toward your belly button or in and then toward your right shoulder. There's a lot of variations to this exercise and it's normal to hear some gurgling sounds from that area when you press on it. And this may be an indicator that the ileothecal valve is stuck open. So there you have it. Those are three ways to help fix small intestine gut motility. To review them quickly, they are number one, intermittent fasting and avoid snacking. Number two, taking prokinetic supplements or medications. And number three is doing ileothecal valve massage. While this is not a complete list, 
list of everything you can do to help with small intestine gut motility. These are three that I really like. That is all for today. If you enjoyed the video or found it helpful, please like and subscribe to my channel for more related content. If you're new to my channel, I post a new full length video every Monday and YouTube shorts throughout the week. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.